In this video, I'm going to explain you how to use heat maps in your actual trading strategy for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Basically, in this video, I'm going to cover from ground zero all the concepts that you need to know to use heat maps in your trading strategy. For the sake of this video, I'm going to use the Trading Light platform on tradinglight.com for this explanation. So all the examples that I will be covering on this video will be made on this software that is tradinglight.com. Well, first and foremost, what I need to do right after I log in into my heat map trading platform like tradinglight.com. The first thing that I need to know is to select the exchange where I'm looking the heat map. Basically, a heat map is just a graphical representation of the order book in a graphical manner. So I need to select the exchange where I'm going to see the order book represented in a heat map. So my advice is to select the top exchanges with the most trading volume. So for that, we will go to coinmarketcap.com and we will find what are the exchanges with the most trading volume. As you can see, the, the exchange with the most trading volume is Binance. The next one is Coinbase, then Bybit and then OKX. For the sake of this video, I'm going to use the Binance Spot, uh, Binance, Bitcoin USDT Binance Spot pair. But I encourage you to use the exchanges, as I said before, with the most trading volume. volume because all the orders, all the liquidity will be concentrated on these exchanges so the heat map and the order book will be more, let's say, probable to be respected or the levels that are appearing on the heat map will be more relevant because of the liquidity on those exchanges are, is higher. So once we have selected the pair that we are going to trade and the exchange of the highest liquidity that we want to see the heat map, this is the first step. Then the second step is to select the theme of the heat map. Trading Light gives us the option to change the theme of the heat map. Now I'm using the default heat map, that it means that the yellowish colors are the most amount of Bitcoin and the bluish colors are the least amount of Bitcoin. But we can change the theme here, for example, from default, we can change it from ocean blue, okay? That, as you can see, the, the apparel of the heat map has changed it completely. And the whitish colors are the highest amount of Bitcoin, and the bluish color are the less amount of Bitcoin. We can change it also for, let's say, for Hellfire, you see? The, let's say the orange colors are the most amount of Bitcoin, and the reddish colors are the least amount of Bitcoin. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to use the default theme of Trading Light. So this is the second step. The first step is selecting the pair. The, the, the second step is selecting the theme of the heat map and then the, the third step and most important step is to filter the heat map to filter the heat map we will use this setting here this tool here that what is allowing us to do as you can see is to change the sensitivity of the minimum amount of bitcoin that we that will be represented of the heat map and the maximum amount of bitcoin that will be represented on the heat map so for me, this is this depends on the exchange and on the asset, but right now we are trading Bitcoin. We can do this the same on, on Ethereum, on Polkadot, on XRP, on whatever asset we want to trade, okay? But for Bitcoin, for in this case, my go-to settings are minimum to 10 to, 4, uh, to 15 Bitcoin and the maximum 200 Bitcoin. This way, we are going to filter out all the noises because if I switch the maximum, you see there is a lot of noise. We can see a lot of orders and the, the chart, the heat map chart, will get pretty, pretty, pretty messy. And this will be a lot confusing. So filtering this out and increasing the sensitivity to 200 or 180 uh, Bitcoin, you can see 200, 180, 200 Bitcoin, okay? We are going to filter all the noise, okay? And also, if we switch, if we leave the minimum to zero, you can see that all the orders, the minimum orders will be represented in the chart. So to avoid the minimum orders, the let's say the least amount of orders with the least amount of Bitcoin, okay, the less liquidity orders, okay, we are going to filter out to 10 to 15 Bitcoin, okay? So this way we, we will have a very good idea of what are the most important levels in the chart. The levels with highest liquidity with highest likely or highest probability of being of acting as support and resistance in this chart so right now in this exact moment how can we interpret this data that we have in the heat map because now we have a heat map we have filtered out we have the 
the exchange, we have the asset, we have the theme, and we have the, the filtering tool, okay? Now we are ready to implement this data into our trading strategy and make decisions of trading based on it. So how can we make these decisions of trading based on this data? As I said before, heat maps are just for identifying supply and demand areas, high supply and high, and high demand areas in the chart, okay? Or support and resistance is the same, it's a synonym. So it's the same concept called in a different way, okay? Because as I said before, the heat map is just a graphical representation of the order book. So as you can see here, the red zone that is 104 Bitcoin is representing a high liquidity area on the as side on the heat map and in the other side if i'm going to the bit side okay we, we see 60 bitcoin here is representing this area of liquidity on the heat map okay so how can i interpret this data to make trading decisions so as you can see here this here was sitting like 351 bitcoin that got filled this order, okay, is what was not spoofing, okay, I explained spoofing in other videos, you can find on my channel what is spoofing, the concept of spoofing, but this order got filled, okay, so it was an axe order, so a lot of people was selling here, indeed the price is stalling here, okay, after, because a lot of sales are clustering here, so we can expect that when we see a level with high liquidity, if it's in the upper price, or, or on the upper part of the price, we can expect that this level, we act as resistance area or, or supply area, okay? And if the level of liquidity is sitting below the price, we can expect that this level will act as support area or demand area, okay? So for example, if the price retraces right now, the price here is stalling, but I think that is making like a accumulation. It's finding resistance, but it's making like an accumulation. So I think from my experience that the price will pump, okay? But if here we have big orders, for example, here we have 128 Bitcoin sitting here waiting to be sold, okay, at the last swing high, okay. So, for example, we can expect that if the price arrives to this area, to this price level, that is $65,000, okay, the price will find resistance there because a lot of shell pressure will be, will be waiting there to be executed, okay. So, what we can do here? We can open, okay, a short position. Well, for example, we can open a short position. We can put our entry point at $65,000, where is the selling, where the people is selling, okay? And put our stop loss, okay? This is an example. This is not an actual trade that I'm making, just to make you see graphically what is an example of these trading decisions, okay? And here we can we execute a short trade idea, okay? From the long side, we can execute a trade, for example, here we have a high liquidity level that we lack, we expect that can act as support or as demand area, so we can make a long position, okay? We can enter at the exact same level where a lot of liquidity is waiting there, a lot of demand is waiting there, okay? And put our stop loss below this level because this level will act as a by wall preventing the price to drop further theoretically because as i said before we have spoofing of 10 times disorders never got filled because as they are spoofing they remove them and then the the, the buy wall or the sell wall got pierced and this level is not um, a level of importance anymore for for you so this is the the main issue of the heat maps because we have a spoofing and people oftentimes put big orders to try to treat your full you and then they remove these orders in order to to grab the liquidity or to fool the traders to put as i done right now the stop loss right below the buy wall this then this buy wall gets remo removed and then the price pierces to the next buy wall that maybe doesn't get removed and then your stop loss got triggered so basically spoofing is to fool traders into a, a trap okay and this is the main use of the heat map in your trading strategy identifying high liquidity levels okay you can switch also time frames okay now we are trading in a one hour one hour time frame okay to avoid a lot of the noise but we can trade on the 50 on the five minute time frame if you are a scalper or a day, day trader okay we can trade in the 50 minute time frame okay 
we can I prefer to use the one hour time frame and the four hour time frame because I consider the higher time frames with higher let's say probability of levels being respected by my experience because I most also as a swing trader I prefer to swing trade rather than scalp or day trade okay that's my personal preference in my trading style but you can trade on lower time frames but I recommend you to use the bigger picture and focus on one hour time frames four hour time frames because are higher time frames and the, the liquidity levels are most likely to be respected so as I said before to wrap up the video the main use of heat maps to implement them in your trading strategy is to find high supply and high demand areas in the chart because of limit orders waiting sitting there in the market waiting to be filled okay so we can execute long long trades or short trades buy trades or selling trades based on these liquidity levels on these supply and demand levels support and resistance levels that we can find in the heat map i don't use personally i don't use heat maps to trade because i consider that heat maps are just more graphically for engagement purpose on social media they, they can be help you, helpful for finding confluence sometimes, but I don't use them because I prefer to use support and resistance and supply and demands based on price action and is the same of, of, of the heat map and I use this on TradingView myself. This is my personal preference and my personal, let's say, way of trading, my personal trading system. But as I said before, sometimes heat maps can be useful to find supply and resistance areas because we see the actual limit orders that we are waiting in the market and we see what the price or what the exchange where the in the exchange the liquidity is clustering in a particular area we cannot see that in trading view um, representing heat maps uh, sorry representing supply support support and demand or supply and demand areas writing just lines okay but we can in have the intuition or the probability that these levels, the last swing lows or the last swing highs or the support and resistance areas based on price action will lack or will have a lot of liquidity clustering there because oftentimes there is a confluence between the, the heat map liquidity and the support and resistance or supply and demand areas that you can find on TradingView reading just price action. In my website tradingthesoldier.com, here if you go to the bottom of my website you can find here in this image my affiliate link my referral link to trading light so if you click here you will be redirected to tradinglight.com and you will sing singing to support my channel and you can purchase the the plans as you can see here this is the the, the plan that you can purchase this 15 14 dollars a month or 24 dollars a month okay if you build monthly and if you build annually it will change so if you visit my website as i said before tradingthesoldier.com you can find my referral link here in the home page in the in the bottom of the home page you can find the referral link just click in the image you will be redirected to to trading light you can use it if you want to support me if you don't want to use it is is better anyways i don't i don't mind just for you to know that i have a referral link and that i used in the past trading light and i quote unquote trust them okay so i did not get scammed with them and the the software the software go, uh, works almost perfectly so it goes it goes well so no, no issues for the moment but as i said before i personally don't use trading light i personally don't use heat maps in my trading system in my trading strategy so i have the software but i don't use it in my daily or swing trading trading strategy so as i always said if you like the video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my Rumble channel, follow me on Twitter, X, where you can find a lot of daily updates that I publish on the market, also charting ideas, trading ideas, trading signals for free, okay? And also, you can follow me on Instagram. So, if you like the video, thank you for your time, and we see you on the next video.